This is the world as you know it in the year 2020. The people will stay. The sheep will flock. The monkey will dance. You will obey. What's going on, everybody? It's, um, it is. I was very concerned about putting, uh, Trump in the title, but I did it. <laughs> when you do that, it's like the algorithm is, you know, they're coming for you. No doubtably right now, somebody, several somebodies are thinking of a way to uh, take advantage of uh, all of us multiple times over again that we can't even fathom and comprehend. It is also uh, smoke day, baby. Smoke that weed. Smoke up. It could save your life. It could probably save your lungs. Who knows? Um, I gotta tell you guys, last night, you know, there's a bunch of stuff I'm supposed to do. Uh, this has been a real slacker of a week for me, obviously, with the stuff I'm doing, so I'm not even gonna go into that, because nobody gives a shit, but the fact of the matter is that's why, um, some things didn't come out. But I have some things coming out. We have a lot of episodes of the post-show for Monetize This ready to, uh, to come out, to drop. Yesterday, I, I gotta tell you, man, I took two chocolate cannabis things, pellets, whatever you want to call it, edibles, I am telling you, man, that this stuff rocked me. I mean, it rocked me. I mean, and I knew when I told people the levels that I had that they were going to say, man, you're a puss. I don't know what it is, man. I've done a lot of things, smoked and things like that over the course of the time and my life, and I have never felt as discombobulated as I did the other day when I did this. I mean, this is some crazy type of stuff. Like, what I felt. I, I, I can't even... Basically, what, what I would describe this cannabis as, this, this edible cannabis, is every single... Everything in my body was accentuated. Like, every feeling, emotion, and thought was doubled. That's how I explain it. It was doubled and out of order. So when I was eating food, I have a little bit of heartburn, you know, with my heartburn and my esophagus and stuff like that. And sometimes when I eat certain foods, I get a little bit of heartburn and I notice it. But I was able to super sense the, um, the heartburn. When I was eating food, I could feel my stomach and my insides. I could feel how disrupted they were. When I got a cramp at one point from eating too many Oreos because I was getting to the point where I was that hungry because of the weed, um, I began to, uh, I could feel it. I could feel, I, the, the, the cramp was accentuated. It was, exas it was uh, the words I'm looking for is not, it was exaggerated. That's the word I'm looking for. It was, it was, Amplified is one of the words I'm looking for. It was very much amplified. And that was interesting to me because, I mean, I've, you know, smoked a ton of th times, like, and I've felt certain ways, you know, usually feel pretty good and whatever. This was the first time I ever felt what my wife always describes to me. She always tells me about being paranoid. I was a little bit paranoid, but that usually doesn't happen to me. But the thing that I noticed the most was, like I said, was that everything was amplified. The feelings of the food running down my throat was amplified. It felt like my left and right side in equilibrium were fighting with each other. I would envision picking up a coffee 
and in my head I would envision picking up the coffee and drinking it, and then I would I would be like I was drinking the coffee, and but that step yet had not happened. So I'd look at the coffee, I'd think about reaching out to grab it to drink it, and I'd be like, yeah, I'm going to do that, I'm going to have a drink. And then it was almost as if I'd reached out, grabbed the cup, brought it to my mouth, but then quickly I snapped out of it and realized that I had not picked up the coffee. And I went on to doing something else, though. So before I'd realized I had not picked up the coffee, I went on to doing something on my keyboard with my left hand, holding my other hand like this. Then I would go, oh my, like, I didn't pick up the coffee. And I would turn and be like, what the hell? And there was even a time where I, I went, oh, I dropped, I spilt it. And then I went, low. no, I never picked it up. What the hell's going on? And I went and grabbed the coffee and took a sip of it. So it that went on all night long. I, I took, and this is crazy because I, I, I have people that tell me they take hundreds and hundreds of milligrams of this stuff. And I took one. 10 milligram one a few different times over the course of the last three months. Almost nothing happened. I took one 10 milligram chocolate. Nothing really happened. I, and I, but I may have gone to bed before the effects took over. Because at 9 o'clock at night, I took two. That's right, 20 milligrams. 20 milligrams. Now, I'd never have ed- ed- edibles before in my life. Besides those those 10 milligram ones I tested, nothing happened. I went to sleep. So I, I am telling you guys that I was tripped out of my mind. I was upstairs trying to talk to Leah, and I was, and I was ahead of the conversation. So I would think a whole sentence, and then I would say the third sentence. So I'd be thinking about what I was saying, and in my mind I was saying it. But then by the third sentence, I actually said that sentence and it made no sense to her. And then I had to laugh and then go back and then say the sentence. Everything was like that. I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this. I'm sure people must have, but it was wild. Like it was so much of that. Like it felt like my left and right hands weren't syncing up correctly. It felt like everything was heightened. So, you know, if you're peeing, like, you get an extra peeing feeling, if that makes any sense. If you're, if you're no, you're, you're doing that, uh, that's the best, uh, which I did do, by the way, and it was, that was the best, man. That was great. It was super amplified. Um, but, yeah, everything was amplified. But what I noticed was the bad was amplified. The bad was amplified a lot in me. Um, James Jack says I need a vape. Yo, Robbie, what's going on, man? How you doing? Joe, do you not have anything spicy when high either? I once felt it travel down my throat, my stomach like lava. Yes, Kieran, like Kieran, that's exactly what happened. And and listen, I, I I admit that this is pussy talk. I talked to Jesse and he was like, "Bro, I do a hundred milligrams at least of like edibles." I other people saying three hundred milligrams. I'm sorry, dude, but like here's the problem: I I was awful. I was terrible. Like, it was so bad. Like, guys, I'm telling you, like, I've smoked a ton before. I've smoked, like, friggin' whatever. Like, I've smoked bong hits. I've rolled just giant fucking, just just smoked the shit out of stuff. I've smoked so much that I got that tunnel vision and whatever. But I have never in my life, man, experienced what I experienced the other day. Like, it was amazing. I gotta tell you. There was another point where I thought I got up out of my chair and I didn't. And I began trying to walk, but I was sitting in my chair. Dude, I was all jacked up. Like, I'm telling you. And, and my a- my ADD and my ADHD got worse. And what wh- what I find... I'm about to tell you what I find the most interesting about this weed. This edible weed that I had the other day. Um, one of the most amazing things is... For the first time, I experienced the opposite of what it was like to be on Concerta or to be on a uh, drug for ADD and ADHD. What's the one? What's the one in college that everybody's taking now? That's it's basically like fucking. It's like acid or whatever. No, it's like um. God, it's not Ritalin. What is it? Uh, 
Somebody in the chat hit me with that with that word, man. I'm not looking it up. Fuck looking it up. I don't even want to do it. I don't even want to do it. Um, somebody hit me with that with what I'm thinking. Adderall. Adderall. So, from being on that from for a couple of months, I was on that shit for a couple of months, and I'll tell you, man, when I went on at like what I am right now is I am not well focused. Right, I have ADD, ADHD, whatever, distractions, whatever you want to call it. I am not well focused all the time. I will start something and then a minute later think of something else and then move over and start working on that thing. And then I will be like, what am I doing? Why am I... I started doing this one thing. Then I moved to another thing, and now I've moved to a third thing, and, and none of those things are done. You know, um, one time I actually was sitting here trying to work on something, and then I remembered, oh, I, I, was, um, I need to bring the laundry down. Leah asked me if I could bring the laundry down, and I went, oh, yeah, I should go do that. And then I went upstairs, brought one basket down, and then I heard from somebody, and I reached out to them to do something, and then I did that thing with them. So I brought one laundry basket down, not the other two that she needed, I didn't finish my solo work that I was doing, and then I began recording a podcast with somebody else. And before you know it, you knew it, I had lost the podcast I was doing. Leah was pissed because I didn't bring down all the laundry, and I did release that one podcast with that person. So you, like, you can see how that happens. Now, when I was on Adderall, or whatever you want to call it, uh, whatever it was, Concerta at the time... You know, and I see the donations coming in, man. I'm going to play these in a minute if they're here. Um, I'm sorry, I, I forgot to put them up. Uh, we'll get them. We'll get them playing. They'll play in a second. My bad. Um, but yeah, happy 420 to everybody. I hope you guys, who, who obviously know what you're doing with weed, have a good time, as opposed to more on me. Um, so, so my point in all this is, when I was on Concerta, or when I was on Adderall, what I would have done instead of what I just described to you. Instead, I would have been intensely focused on recording the podcast I was recording. I would have finished that podcast, and then I would have said, oh, I need to bring the laundry down and do some things. I would have gone upstairs, grabbed all three laundry baskets or whatever, and at a time brought them down and felt amazingly accomplished for doing that. I probably then would have started cleaning like cleaning other things and cleaning more things to make it even cleaner. I probably would have brought laundry that was down here upstairs and completed both tasks. And then I probably would have messaged that person and said, hey, let's do that podcast. And then I probably would have then done that podcast then. So you would see that I finished each task one by one fully and probably in about the same amount of time as it took me to incomplete the three tasks throughout the day prior. Now, smoke, now t t eating this edible weed the other day made me amplified my flaws a thousand times. I was literally in like envision envisioning pouring a drink for myself and and then I didn't pour the drink then I I went to go have the drink a few minutes afterwards the glass was still sitting there and I hadn't poured it yet um and 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 these weren't like hallucinations like like oh you're hallucinating so much that you know you're all this stuff is going down. It, but it was. It was like an amplification of ADD and ADHD. So it wasn't until yesterday that I, that I realized the other side of the spectrum. It's kind of amazing, right? Here's regular me who normally would, would uh, struggle with three tasks. But I could probably get one done. And everything would, you know, eventually get done. But it would be done kind of stupid. But on this weed, everything I did was completely retarded. 
And I felt it, and I felt it more and more. Because I feel it when I'm disorganized now. I feel it when I'm like, what am I doing? Jumping from this to that. But there's a self-awareness of it that's there that wasn't there before. I have a self-awareness for it because of the Concerta and the Adderall. Because I saw what it was like to be organized and how it felt to be that clairvoyant about what I was doing, it made me super aware of how I actually am. So when people say, should I take Concerta, take Adderall, or take something like that, it's like, yeah, you probably shouldn't really too much, but it really does, it really can actually help you a lot. So, so there may be some people that really should be taking it. But I definitely think that some people should, who aren't addictive, if you have an addictive personality, maybe not. But if you don't have that addictive of a personality, or a body, whatever you want to call it, maybe take, maybe take it for a little while. Because I'll tell you what, I was... It's almost like if I take it for about uh, a month, that sets me on a great path for the next like three to six months where I don't need it. But I'm, but it's almost like it sticks with me a little bit, and I became I become a little bit hyper aware of, of what I'm doing wrong. But I wouldn't have known it had I not taken that and seen what it's like to be like that. And but but you're never really like that again unless you're taking the medicine, so or the medication. So anyway, I'm done with that rant or that ramble. But it was interesting because I saw myself as I am, and I've seen myself advanced on Adderall. But on the 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 twenty milligrams of chocolate weed edibles, which is not a lot, but for me it was. It took two hours to kick in. I saw myself over here, like on the opposite side, like the dumbest shit you've ever seen. I mean, listen, I've been high a million times where I'm, where I'm laughing and stupid and goofy. And I'm like, ah, ha, ha, like, oh, fuck that, man. I'm fucked up. But this was not that. This was some kind of experience of somebody who was on, on a much lower IQ and wavelength. It was crazy to me. So, I mean, I mean, and that's just weak. Can you imagine what DMT would do to me? Dude, I'd probably eat my own ass live on Vimeo. What's up, uh, Dave Rose? How you doing? Arcnolia Strokel Bean, what's going on, Arcnolia? How are you, man? Um, there's no such thing as ADD and ADHD. It's uh, epigenetic. I don't know. Uh, you have to explain that to me, Dave. But I, I may agree with you that there isn't really an ADD, ADHD. Those are, those are like terms that were made by the government in the medical field or whatever, so that they could sell us all these fucking medications and diagnose everybody with something that almost everybody has anyway and whatever the case you want to get into so yeah i mean i sort of see what you're saying but uh, it's like it's like uh, it's like autism it's like people having autism um there's a big spectrum of autism so if but if you were to isolate each one of those spectrums and put a name on it oh you have um you have uh, radical emotional gobstopper aut autism like or you have um um <clears throat> emotional distress autism like and they just started naming all these different things on because the spectrum is so big and wide right and really everybody's on a spectrum that's really what it is we're all on a spectrum there's no such thing as you're autistic put you in a thing and you're in a spectrum no we're all on a spectrum we're all on a spectrum mentally and you can circle some categories where you're this way you're that way like things that you do well physical reaction you know what i mean if someone throws a fucking fastball at you boom are you gonna catch it are you gonna move or are you gonna get hit in the face right if if you throw if i throw a baseball at you to surprise you are you gonna move catch or are you going to get hit in the face what's your reflex and after i throw something at you out of a surprise if you know it's coming what do you do when you know it's coming when you know it's coming do you dodge or do you reach out and grab it now, if you took test subjects and you did this with a hundred different people, you could start naming stuff after them. Like, oh, they're, um, they're, um, they're reaction time A, they're reaction time B. And then you could probably classify the lowest individuals. Um, like, you know, the people that basically didn't move out of the way. And then the people that couldn't even move out of the way or avoid the, the, the ball when they knew it was coming. And you, you could classify them in some kind of a, like deficient to uh, physical, like whatever, reaction timing. And you could come up with some name for that or whatever and then come up with a drug that's sort of 
makes you hyperactive or something, and then your reaction skills come up, and they start selling that to football players in high school and stuff like that. You know, it, these are weird things um, that they would do. You know, and a lot of these things can be triggered. You know, and, and Dave Rose brings up big pharma and stuff like that. I'm, I don't know if I'm right. I'm not qualified enough to, or I, I'm not knowledgeable enough to get into where the environment is altering and messing with ADD and ADHD or whatever you want to call it, what it, what it really is. But what we can, what we, what we can talk about that, that is easier to measure is peanut allergies. Yori the Don says, I'm just retarded. Yeah, I mean, I, that's, I mean that's basically it. It's, it's another word, instead of calling people stupid, you, you come up with all these things. Now, I mean, I don't think I'm stupid 100%, but I am disorganized. It's like that word is bad or something. It's like, no, you, are dis, you have a disorganized brain. You are disorganized. This medication helps you be more organized. You are disorganized. You're a disorganized person. But because that's too mean, like, oh, you're disorganized or you're not that smart when it comes to scheduling things or you need maybe you need to train your brain. That's the other thing. We, we don't we don't think to, like, bring someone into training. No one no one said, hey, maybe he just needs to be trained a little better. You know, you give him a little maybe you give him a little medication and then you train somebody and then they get better at stuff. Just like when you lift weights, you get bigger muscles. Well, when you get trained on being organized, you, you might get more organized. But instead, it's just here, take this pill, take this pill, take this pill, take this pill. Um, but no, um, peanut allergies. Why are peanut allergies through the fucking roof? The peanut allergies didn't used to be through the roof. You know what I mean? They are now. They're through the roof. Everybody's got these peanut allergies. Hell, my, my son has a peanut allergy. Me and Leah don't have peanut allergies. Nobody in her family has peanut allergies. Nobody in my family has peanut allergies that we know of. Nothing in my blood says anything about peanut allergies. Yet we have a boy who has a peanut allergy. The other two kids don't have peanut allergies either. But he has a peanut allergy. And tons of, his, um, of, my son, of Gavin's friends have peanut allergies. When we were kids... There were kids in school everywhere eating fucking peanut butter left and right. Nobody got sick. Nobody died. Nobody got sick. Nobody said, oh, my God, I got a peanut allergy. If there was anybody with a peanut allergy, in fact, I think I remember there was one kid with a peanut allergy in school. And it was super talked about. Like, like he was like a leper, right? He, it was like, oh, don't go near Billy with peanuts. Like, and he had to eat separate lunch and shit like that. He was like a fucking leper. Why is it when we were kids, were there maybe in the entire population of kids, one, two, maybe three kids with peanut allergies? Now, every single classroom, there's one or two kids in the classroom with a peanut allergy. It's not testing. It's not that we got better at testing. Because kids would have been dropping like crazy back then, and they would have said, something's going on here. It's a peanut allergy. We knew how to test for peanut allergies then. We were better at it now, but it's nowhere. It's still not the same. So what's the, what's the answer? Well, we can start talking about it. It could be food. could be the shit in our food. That could be number one. could be the shit in the environment, like Rose just said a minute ago in the chat. Um, or, or it could be other things. It could be our DNA being altered could be our DNA breaking down, you know, but, but I, I tend to go with the chemicals in the food that you're fed as a child and then you develop the peanut allergy. Something is going into our food that's triggering our bodies, some bodies, to develop these massive allergies. We're talking about peanut, soy, wheat, just allergies are off the fucking charts nowadays. It's insane. There's some kind of oil or something that's going in, in your skin. And we know it because it happens in Petri dishes. We know it happens in Petri dishes. The stuff they were using in in vitro babies. The stuff that they use in in vitro babies has been proven to cause bodies and, and those children a lot of times to have hyper amounts of peanut allergy illness and, and things like that. Because there's something they used in the Petri dishes Apparently, they changed it now, maybe. I don't know. 
But the stuff that was in the petri dish was a common, somewhat common thing used in many other different little things. Um, and I and I wish I could remember the compounds and the names. And I know that's um, you're saying, well, that's kind of important, Joe, to remember those names and those things. Well, Joe doesn't remember, but Joe does remember that this is true. Okay. Um, so if the if the stuff in the petri dish wasn't good for growing in vitro babies. Well, whatever you're using on children under the age of three that is also the same chemical in those Petri dishes also can create a reaction, a failed reaction to peanuts in the body. And uh, Dave Rose says it's sunscreen. That could be it. The increased levels of vaccination in children. Yeah, it could be that too. And listen, I don't think vaccines are bad, like all, all bad. You know what I mean? I don't think so. But there's definitely reactions happening because of them. I don't know if it's, you know, the reactions that people say that are happening, but something's happening. Something For every reaction, there is a equal and opposite reaction, right? Isn't that a science term? But it's funny when you bring this up to science people. And listen, I'm not an anti-vaxxer. We, I, we need vaccines. But the fact of the matter is, there is, ma there is major risk in the vaccines. Like, that's just what it is. When you're signing up to get a vaccine, listen, you're, you, something bad may happen to you. Or something bad down the line may be happening to you that we don't even know about yet. Our government still allows us to eat food that gives us cancer. Can you imagine what the fuck is in the fucking vaccines? You know what I mean? Before they figure that out and decide to change something. And they have they have changed a few things with the vaccines. But if you don't think that the peanut allergies and the allergies and stuff like that isn't a result of the environment or what's in these things. Like, I mean, there's something up. I don't, you know, I, I again, all my kids are vaccinated. I'm not guilty of this shit. I'm just saying, like, we we're all vaccinated. I haven't had the flu shot in seven years. I will say that. I haven't had the flu shot in seven or eight years. Um, you know, and I I don't know. But it may be time to get another one. I just don't think you need one every year. Don't get... Why the fuck would you get one every year? Like, my body has got so many antibodies towards the flu. Probably even if the variations come out now and I got it, I, my body would probably shit on it. But uh, it's been eight years since I've had the flu vaccine, so maybe it's time, maybe now, to have one um, because, you know, your body will have those immunities. But who knows what's in it? So just know that, you know, yeah, go listen, go get vaccinated if you want, but just remember that there, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And they tell you that the goddamn food you eat is, is safe, and it's not. A lot of it's not. <laughs> Here we go. What's up, everybody? How you doing today? I'm ranting. <laughs> oh, damn. Uh, my son, Champ, thank you for the $10, man. What's going on? It's been a long week, dude. I got the heater guy coming here tomorrow. Um, you know, so that's going to be weird. We're going to stay out of the basement tomorrow. Um, I'm going to try to make sure that... Uh, Nobody goes down to the basement for two days. I know this is being a little bit extreme potentially, but, you know, the guy is going to be coming in and installing the new heating system. And this was happening anyway. The heater's, the heater's been out there for, for three months waiting to be installed. And right now the heating system, the exhaust runs up that, that metal pipe that you guys saw that is leaking. Like that's fucking carbon monoxide potentially coming out of that. And going into the fireplace flue and out the fireplace, right? So that's going to eliminate that. This heater is going to eliminate that. You're going to rip all that shit out, rip the heater out. And then this new heater is going to vent through the wall of the house through PVC. So that's all going to be, I hope, done tomorrow by him. I will be angry. He's got to be done by tomorrow because don't want him coming back again. Um so I'm just to be safe. We're gonna I'm gonna make sure nobody goes in the basement for two days, because you know if the Corona stuff, uh, if, you know he sneezes in the basement or he's talking in the basement, he's breathing in the basement. You know what I mean? Um, that can linger for 24 hours. It can linger for probably longer than we know on the surfaces it lands on. So we're gonna, you know, I'm gonna keep everybody out of the basement, disinfect it when I'm when he's done. And, um, yeah, I mean, listen, 
it, yeah, I mean, well, well, real YT, you have to weigh the, the the benefits, right? Like, I personally didn't see the benefit in getting the flu shot every year. So it's been eight years. Now, I may go get the flu shot soon because it's been a while, and I do believe in getting those antibodies that I may need. Um, but I don't believe in getting it every single goddamn year. You know, um, I had a... My mother's uh, ex-boyfriend's father had polio, and he was one of the last people that had polio, I think. He was always bent over, and, and he walked sideways because of the polio. It was crazy. Um, but, yeah, it's – um. but when you think about it, why why would they not why, – why are they mad? Let's talk about a really important thing now, and I'm going to play the rest of the donations. I will. Why are they so mad about the hydroxychloroquine stuff, right? Why are they so mad every single time somebody says this might be working? Why are they mad? Well, because Trump isn't playing the game. Trump finds out that there's good research in some of this stuff. He spews it out of his mouth, right, before they can set a narrative and set an agenda. And the narrative and agenda would be from Dr. Fauci and all these people who controlled people with AIDS for so long. The a the AIDS is almost cured, right? I mean, I mean it's not cured, but the AIDS is well maintained now through medications and these have all dropped in price, right? Before it was just Magic Johnson could be saved. But don't but believe believe me, they could have saved everybody, but they just didn't want to. Um, but now the more and more that, that these companies one up each other to try to protect people through making money, now it's come down to the point where AIDS really isn't a big enough threat anymore for big pharma. And the flu isn't really a big threat anymore either because nobody is going. A lot of people are not getting flu vaccinations anymore. Think about it. Go look up the flu vaccination amount. It dropped drastically. How are they going to make money again, guys? How are they going to make money again? Well, you introduce a new coronavirus. You introduce this pandemic. You introduce hype. Um, you know, you make sure people know that people are dying and getting sick of this, not the flu. It's a Corona. Um, and then what do you do? You create a vaccine, right? And now everybody is scared. Everybody has been reprogrammed to be like, oh my God, I need the vaccine. Then you release a vaccine that millions of people are going to need. We're talking about a billion people. We're talking about the numbers for flu shots were way down and they were losing a ton of money. But now here's Corona that probably the antibodies, only they're going to start saying will only last three to six months to scare the hell out of you. Um, and then every year they're going to roll out a new Corona um, shot that you need, right? And, and you're not going to want to not, you're not going to want to get sick and die like all the people that they've been telling you are going to die every single day. You're not going to want that. You're not going to want to be locked in your houses again, right? And then there's going to be some places that, that, that demand you have on a card that you've had your current shot, that you've had your medicine. Um, and you, so you're going to want to have that stamp so you can still go to work or still get a job or still fly somewhere or whatever. So that's happening too. And every single year, guys, this is EA Sports. I've seen this before. It's called Madden. It's called EA Sports, NHL, 2K. It's, it's called video games. Most video games come out with Halo 1 or Halo 2. But that's not profitable. What's profitable is Fortnite. Fortnite 1. The same Fortnite that everybody's been playing is the same Fortnite that they're playing right now, except every month there's a new season and you got to buy it. It's a beta. It's an upgrade. It's you have to buy it. The next one. Every year people pay for basically a patch, a Madden patch, right? A Madden patch or a NHL EA Sports patch. You get the game and you think to yourself, this game is almost the same as last year's. It's damn near the same thing. They just fixed a little glitch with the puck here, and they fixed a couple other things. Well, that's called a patch. In World of Warcraft, in Diablo, in many other games, that'd be called a patch. 
hey, we patched the game, we fixed some problems, and we did some things. That's a patch in Fortnite, it's a patch in PUBG. But what EA Sports does is they don't, pa- they don't market it as a patch. They market it as a brand new game. EA Sports NHL 2012, 2013, the new game, 2014, the new game. It's not the new game, really. It's just a little patch. They changed a couple things. They shuffled some names around on the teams, and you paid full price for it. So the best way to get your money and to get money off of you is not to cure 500,000 people or to cure a million people. There's almost no money in that. Half the people don't have the money to pay you for the cure. And the hospitals have to use it. You never collect your money fast enough. So would these companies rather give you the cure? Here, take this. You're going to be better. Well, here's a million cures. Okay, it's done. We're, We're done. And then here's a couple thousand cures over the next years. Okay, we're done. I guess that's it. But what's better is... Every single year, one billion of you have to get the patch notes shot in your arm. Have to get the patch notes shot in your arm. Think about it. It's going to be a billion people per year. Were a billion people per year going to need the cure? Nope. No. A billion people per year wouldn't have needed the cure. Are they going to study the people who are asymptomatic? And by the way, it seems like 40% of you are asymptomatic, maybe 60%. By the study on the Navy vessel, by the study in UK, by the study in Chelsea, Massachusetts, all studies are pointing to like 40 to 60% are asymptomatic, capable of giving it to someone else and killing them, but you yourself not getting it. Are we going to study why these people are asymptomatic? Because if you are asymptomatic and um, you're never going to have that issue, are you going to get the shot? Well, yes, probably because you could still pass it on to somebody else. Are we going to get antibody tests? Because by the time we're done with antibody tests and that, you say, oh, well, you don't, those people don't need shots. But yeah, they do because it's going to mutate, so it's going to change later. So you're going to need the patch notes every single year. A billion every year. As opposed to treating it now, right? The pre- it's got to be preemptive and then it's got to be active for the, for the, uh, the cure. This is an interesting point. Now, make no mistake about it. This is a scary thing. The virus is killing people. It is bad. But based on the new numbers that we have, there's about 40% of the population that we have not included that have had this already, that were asymptomatic. Therefore, we we do not have a death rate of 6%. We do not have a death rate of 5%. We do not have a death rate of 3%. What's the flu death rate? Somebody get me the flu death rate. In fact, I'll find it. Hold on a minute. Flu death rate. Um, Hold on. I really got to get my Alexa app down here because she'd probably tell me. Um, okay, the flu kills fewer than 1%. We know that, but I want to know the exact number. Because if the flu kills zero, I think it's zero point, like, what, 30% or 15%. Somebody give me the number. It's like 12, 0.12%. Somebody know? What's up, Athens, Greece? How you doing, man? Raging Racer, how you doing, man? What happened to my old studio setup? Um, We got some water in the basement during a 70-mile-an-hour windstorm that happened recently. Um, 
I'm trying to see where people are saying this. Um, Joel, I like you, but you're wrong in downplaying this like Trump. Mr. P, no, I'm not downplaying this at all. Oh, no, I'm not downplaying this. I'm just, I, I am, um, I'm churning the binoculars so you can actually see it. I am not downplaying this whatsoever. I haven't left my house in five weeks. I am not downplaying this. There's people dead. There's people really sick. I am not downplaying this. This is very, very contagious, okay? So, no, I'm not, I am not downplaying this whatsoever. I am strongly in belief of it. And I don't know why you're saying Trump is downplaying it. Trump is the one who closed the borders quicker than anybody else. And they said in, on February 26, Nancy Pelosi told everybody to come on out and hang out in Chinatown. Meanwhile, Trump was already taking this seriously before that. So I don't think Trump's downplaying it. I think Trump's made some mistakes with this, obviously. But, I mean, downplaying it? No, 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 no. Certainly not downplaying it. Um, okay, so it looks like the flu is, some, is like about maybe like 40%. So it looks to me like potentially COVID-19... Instead of being uh, 3% or 5% of people die from it, it seems like these are more likely the numbers. It seems like if the flu kills about 0.30%, COVID-19 kills about 0.90%. Because if you study 100 people that you've never studied before and you don't know what they've done or where they've been, you study 100 people right now, the numbers are coming out that... You know, 40, you know, 30 to 60 percent of them actually have the antibodies already. And sh and so they've already been asymptomatic. OK, in all the studies, the homeless shelter in Chelsea, Massachusetts, like 38 percent of them or something like that had the antibodies already. And there were 10 and 15 percent of them that we couldn't clarify because they may be at the early stages of actually developing the symptoms. But the other ones had definitely beat it and never even knew that they had it. it they were asymptomatic. So that was 100 people that, or hundreds of people, 300 people or something like that you, they randomly tested. And 30 percent of them had already had it. They never would have been a stat. They never would have been added as a stat to this. You know what I'm saying? So this never would have been a stat. So, you, so that would drop the number drastically. So if we can assume that in, in the entire world almost that somewhere let's let's be you know let's let's go down let's go lower and just be safe somewhere between 15 and 50% of people have have already had this and been asymptomatic to it 15 to 50% we don't know the number really but somewhere in there 15 to 50% that lowers the death rate significantly and I'm not trying to downplay this I'm trying to deliver the actual facts and find out the real numbers so the real, if the flu is about 0.30% that it kills people, this is somewhere more like 0.90%. So, so we may have on our hands, it, it is still more threatening than the flu. It is more threatening because it spreads faster. It spreads easier than the flu. So it's bigger than the flu because it spreads faster and it spreads around easier than the flu, allegedly. Um, and it definitely seems to kill more, potentially, at least from what we know now, but it certainly doesn't seem like it kills in the 3 to 5 to 6% range because they're not adding the 30 to 20% of the population that basically is asymptomatic to it. So there's so many more levels. There's a whole bunch of people who are going to get it, and they won't die of it at all. They won't even know they had it. So won't know you had it. Mild symptoms, severe symptoms, emergency symptoms, and critical, right? There's like five different levels to this thing. And we're leaving one of them off. They're ripping one of them off. So asymptomatic, didn't know he had it, isn't there. Right now it's just mild symptoms, severe symptoms, emergency symptoms, critical. Like critical to dead, right? Well, the first one that affects the most people, probably, right? What affects the most people of these five things? The asymptomatic, number one. Like 30 to 40% of the whole world won't even know they had it. So right there, that's 30 to 40% of the whole world. And then who's the second most affected by this? The people who got the mild sickness. 
The people who got kind of sick for a couple weeks or kind of sick for a couple days or didn't feel too well, that's the next group. Now that makes up like 60 to 70% of the whole world. So now 60 to 70% of the people definitely won't die. You know what I mean? And then there's the other people who end up hospitalized, and then that's like 28%, 29%. And then the 1% of people that get severe. So the numbers are like, it, like I, and I, what I'm saying aren't factual numbers either. I'm just spewing stuff out there. I am not a doctor, nor should you listen to me, but I'm just saying there is a fact that we are not calculating all the people that have already been asymptomatic. And now that we have several studies from Australia, from the UK, from Boston, Massachusetts, and a Navy cruise ship, we have learned that without knowing who was sick really or figure, trying to figure it out, they went through the whole ship, they went through the whole area, and in all of these studies, somewhere between 30 and 60% had had the virus, didn't ever know it, and they were 100% asymptomatic. That is now, those studies are facts. Doesn't mean it's a fact everywhere for every country, every race, every blood type. We don't know. Are they going to start working on how it affects people's blood types, people's races, people's genetics, and break down the genetic of this? I don't know. Why don't they? They do that with everything else, and they, and they nail it when they do it. Why don't they do it now? So... In my estimation, in, in the Joe Cronin estimation, keeping in mind that I am not a scientist, not a doctor, this thing is killing less than 1% of people. Less. Because we're not even encountering the people that had it. That we're not even accounting for the people that may have had it. And when we get the antibody tests, if we ever get the antibody tests, we'll know. That being said, this is a very serious thing. Wear a mask in public if you can. Wear a mask. Wear a mask in public. Wear a mask in your house. Whatever you want to do. Wash your hands. I am. I'm washing everything. Take this very seriously. I'm just saying we're trying to figure out these numbers. and They don't seem to be adding up before. Now they're starting to add up in a different way. And certainly proximity is the worst thing. The worst thing for this virus is proximity. Being in the same room with a bunch of people. Being in the same areas with people. And, and people that are places that are massively populated, that is the key. It's proximity. This thing is definitely passing on way more as a respiratory deal. You know? And, and are the people that are asymptomatic, are those people getting it from touching something and then touching their face? Or are they, are they, is that why they're asymptomatic? Are people that get directly, breathing it in directly into their respiratory, is, are those people the ones that are getting violently sick and dangerously sick? I don't know. There could be a correlation there, too. So you could go out and be like, I don't give a shit anymore. Fuck this shit. I might be asymptomatic. I don't care. But you may then breathe it in and get the hard version of it. You know what I mean? Whereas a lot of those asymptomatic people were actually getting it from surfaces. And over days, the virus broke down and became weaker. And then maybe they touched their face or something like that. And they got that asymptomatic version. We don't know. Nobody. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about right now. I'm just throwing shit at the wall and seeing what's going on. My Skype is going to be open um, to anybody who wants to call in uh, 339-226-6610. Holy shit. Tre T Rev. Not good for us in the oil industry. It's $35 for a barrel of oil. That's a first in history. Hashtag pray for the oil field. Jesus. I mean, that's crazy, T Rev. I mean, I, I hate to say this after you donate something like that, but I mean, I've always thought that we needed to move on to some other kind of energy anyway. Like, why the hell are we, why are we still using oil for all the cars and all those things? Like, you know what I mean? We really need to move on to something different and use oil for big machines and for, for different things like that. Um, and oil could be a specialty thing that we, but I don't know. But then again, nature continues to produce it, right? Nature continues to produce it. The earth continues to produce oil. It's not like we're running out. So it's something that maybe the, the nature in the world intended for us to use and to have. So I can see that argument as well. I'm sorry that it's you are wrong. fucking up your... It's all on a spectrum. For example, Bullfrog is off the spectrum. By the way, it isn't just happening to your channel. I haven't gotten any YouTube notifications in over a week. Wow. And I do have them turned on. Jag to Panzer, thank you. You are wrong. We are not all on a spectrum. Hmm. Bullfrog is off the spectrum. 
Well, I feel I feel like we are all on 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 a, on a we're all on a wheel. Our brains are all in some kind of spectrum, and you know the autism one is it's it's a corner of its own. You know what I mean, and, and things like that. But um, shit bomb. I suppose I could be wrong. I, guess. I remember those days. Oh wait, I still have those days. <laughs> Rob Van Dam has them days every day. I think Rob Van Dam. Thanks for the donation, Jag De Panzer. Thank you, man. Probably am wrong. I mean, I don't know a damn thing. I'm just rambling. I've lost my goddamn mind. Um, yeah, it's all about money. The deep state is controlling um, the free energy. That's true. They're also controlling uh, how we get our news, right? Like Alex Jones is banned from everything, but CNN can be wrong about all kinds of shit, and they can keep going on. What else and we got? Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's it. The bubbly? goon. Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's U.S. total deaths around 26,000 via Google search. Media claims 40,000. This is blown out of proportion. This is why we have virus, I believe. Trump cut manufacturing in China. China retaliates with the virus to kill you. Yeah. The goon, I am not, um, the goon, I'm starting to wonder about what you just said, bro. We all know about the tariffs and the trade deal with China. For the first time, somebody stuck up to China and said, fuck you. Now, all of a sudden, there's this, um, big virus and plague. They even killed their own people. Um... All the globalists work together to make sure things get shut down. And to even even if some of the Republicans, you know, don't believe it, the, the, even they're scared to shut and they shut things down because it's so convincing that we're all going to die if we don't shut things down. We make everything in China. So we are now dependent on China and now we need to order two to three to four times the amount of bulk and product that we needed to buy before. So China is able to theoretically make the same amount of money they made before they restructured a deal with Trump. Um, it is, it is, it cannot be ignored. What you just said cannot be ignored. Raging Racer says over 3,000 Greeks have gone to jail for not following the rules. You can't even go outside without texting a government number for permission. They are tracking your locations as well. I'm from Michigan, now living in Greece. Thank God I left when I did. I escaped the apocalypse. It sounds like you're in the apocalypse. Good God. Um, I'm, I'm concerned that the goon is correct. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm concerned that the goon is possibly correct. Government has declared COVID deaths on people that did not test positive nor received an actual test. I agree. They have been marking people um, um, for any any reason. Like, oh, you've got, it's, they mark COVID, yeah. I mean, you could make the excuse that they're doing that because they want to be precautionary. So if you come in with any symptoms like it, and they're understaffed, and they're dealing with so many people, they're just going to mark you, assume they've got coronavirus okay move over here and then if you die boom you know the corona something happened with that that's why they had this uh, problem so i don't know a lot of a lot of weird information out there uh, joe your hat is made in china too yeah everything is that's why we need to make stuff here we need to make stuff here in america we definitely still buy stuff from china but we need to make stuff in america all the countries need to make stuff in your own country everybody Yes, I mean, still buy from other countries. That's great. But more production in your own country is would be way better. I don't know why I got so crazy political in this episode today, but I don't know, man. I had a lot of stuff I was seeing that I wanted to rant on. 817, hello. Hey, Joe. What's going on, brother? What's up, man? How are you? Oh, doing well. Uh, you was talking about all this, all this uh, corona stuff going on. I thought I would uh, pitch in my little piece of information. but Yeah, you guys are about to open up again over there. Yeah, you know, that, you know, I'm, I can see both sides of it, but it is what it is. But yeah. what I can say is for the last 
however many weeks, whatever, my wife's been working from home as a charge nurse and they put her on basically, if you need any info call. So she's been dealing with every level of the hospital from the babies being born to the ER. And I can tell you the hundreds of patients a day that come through, the majority of them were negative. The ones that did come through with Corona-like symptoms, the way the hospital told the doctors, if they have like any of, they, they gave them a list and if there was any of two or three like symptoms, if it was flu or Corona, whatever listed as possible Corona. So that these death numbers that are being piled up, if you had two of these symptoms, if you had the sniffles and the other thing, and you got hit by a car and died from it, you're put on on the death toll of the coronavirus, right? Because it was on your transcript, basically. You never had it. Now the whole I don't know about the whole asymptomatic. I'm I'm like you. I'm no doctor. I I'm, I'm not even going to begin to describe on that deal. But I can tell you that. It is the virus is real. I, like I said. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Nobody. I, people, I, I, I can't believe. I've had, I've had people here that had it, but yeah, it's real. No, anybody thinking that this ain't real? Like, there's right. there's really a virus out there. We're trying to figure out what but it really see, is, what, though. From what I've seen from it, this this is a predator virus. And I, I talked to one of the doctors at the hospital down here. This is what this guy. This guy has worked with doctors without borders across the world. Everything else. This is a predator virus, and these are his words, not mine. I wish I could give more intel, but if I told, I'd be getting a whole lot of fucking people in trouble. So, you know, apologies. But this is not a flu. This is a whatever. This this attacks your body at the weakest part. If you have a heart, a lung, a kidney, or whatever it may be, that's where it hits you. My cousin that died, he yeah. had bad kidneys that killed him from that, and it was na- and it was named as coronavirus. And that's it why wasn't a flu. that's you, that's you know? all that's honestly that from a medical standpoint, that's why they're also that's why they are listing it as a covid death, because. Right. Yeah. You had a heart attack, but we're suspecting you wouldn't have had that heart attack if you'd even had the yeah. flu or anything else. So we're relating it to the death. And that's why oh, they're, yeah. they're listening like, oh, kidney failure. Well, yep. you had coronavirus, though. So the kidney failure, we're going to check it off as Corona. That's exactly what it is. So it's a, you know, I've, I've seen conspiracy theories that started in Canada and it was moved to Wuhan and, uh, you know, Obama sold it to Wuhan. We'll never know. It'll be just like who shot JFK. We'll never find out. The end of the day, this is not, I don't even take flu shots just for the same reason. I don't take anything. If the government sits there and tells me you have to take this, there's an ulterior motive behind it. I firmly believe that. Right. We these politicians are only out for themselves. How, how do politicians make a hundred thousand dollars a year and live in million dollar homes? It doesn't right. make you. You look at the way this government is structured. They're about themselves. We are pawns on their chessboard. We die. We're replaceable. They could give a shit. And that's really what it is. Well, it's just like on college sports, where you know like the movie blue chip right. or chips or something like that. It's like, you know, there's a, there's a college athlete and you know, they're not making money, but yet the guy's driving like some kind of crazy car and his parents are getting a new house. That's because, you know, they're really getting paid from somewhere else. And that's why, you know, that's why politicians like, I don't make a big deal when like when, you know, when Trump donates his salary, 400,000, you know, I, yeah, I don't Trump's got more money than he'll ever spend in yeah, his life. He don't would, it. Even if Obama did that, if Obama had said, Hey, well, you know what? I'm going to give right. my entire, uh, Paycheck. Well, I I don't care because I know that you're getting money from all, all over the other place, so it doesn't matter. Of course. But um. Well, and that's the thing. But yeah, man, people need to real people just gotta you know, they gotta realize it. Like, cause see, like th- this is the thing where I get caught up, where I start talking about this through the science and the medical side of things, because that's what I really do believe in. You know, I get called a liberal and a psycho left wing person. Right. And then when I start doing what I'm doing today right now, which is comparing the numbers and saying, hey, man, something. You know, then these numbers are, are off, and there's a little bit something else going on here. Then, you, then I start getting called a right wing tinfoil psycho, uh, non believer in the virus. Well, but really, I'm 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 really just rolling down the middle of the road, trying to grab from the left and right, and try to grab the. What, we're trying to find out what's really going on here, not trying to. I'll push... tell you this much. Yeah. 
where I, where I live, I, I'm on a 12 acre property with five people and nobody else around me. The only reason my wife came down with this was because she went to that fucking hospital. Right. Other than that, she had been nowhere else. Our population centers, the government wants you to flock to the city. Oh, come live here. That's why they build everything there. And look at what happens. They stack people up in apartment buildings like cordwood. And the shit spreads like wildfire, whether it's flu or whatever virus it is. You want to talk about social distancing, the best thing anybody can do for themselves Move away from the people. I'm not saying move out into the sticks like I am, but get your own space. Get a little bit of a yard away from somebody. Well, because that's the correlation of all of this. It's always right. about proximity. That's why people yeah. in, oh, like, yeah. you know, that's why people in areas like even your area and other areas like that, they're, right. you know, they're like, oh, I'm not worried about this. Well, no, it's real and it can really happen to you and you can get, you can die and you can get affected. But. Of you're less likely to because you're, you, you know, you come in contact or, or near somebody. If you only come near somebody when you go grocery shopping and you only come near somebody, if they oh, happen yeah. to walk up to you, you know, you're, you're going to, your chances are so much different than somebody who's living on a street with people, every house and corner stores everywhere. And every time everybody goes out, your time's in that by the potential of three to infect Oh, hell yeah. it, it's 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 all about the numbers. Do the do the math on the numbers, and we know why the cities are so bad. It's not it's not poor people necessarily. No. It's not black people. It's not Italians. It's like Spain, Italy, Spain, New York, New Jersey. It's going to be Massachusetts next. And I said this weeks ago. I said it's it, we're, we'll be the we'll be next. We will be the oh yeah, no Ma- doubt. Massachusetts will be the. I I I hope and I think I believe that Massachusetts will be the last hot spot, if, if that makes any sense. Because, see, in Chicago... Well, because it, it's hit everywhere else. New York, California, and everywhere in between. Hell, yeah. Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, we've all had it around here. Now, it's been less effective where in this area, the DFW area. It's bad, but not <laughs> what it could have been. Now, my personal area, there's been maybe... Out of a couple thousand people, maybe 50 cases, roughly. I mean, I right. don't know every single person, but, you know, just general information I hear and whatever. But that's the whole thing. It's a – this is a predator virus that was that was released by – Trump is not the – he's uh, – Obama, Trump, I don't give a shit. Whoever, you know, if Obama was in charge or whatever, the people that are above them, that Illuminati, NWO level of people – Yeah. They're the ones pulling the strings. Something's the going business on. Business people run this world. It's not politicians. It's your businesses that have the money that pump this shit into us. Oh, you're sick? Here, take this cure. Oh, you're better than now. We're going to make you sick again, just like you were talking about. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 very it's very weird. Um, there's something going on that we really got to figure out. Like, but it, the the other thing about it is, um, you know. Uh, Look at the. I mean, like, like there's, there's always something going on that we don't, that doesn't make sense. Look at this. Um, where is it? Is this the controlled demolition? Oh, I lost it. There was a controlled demolition um, from China that I saw earlier, and it made me think of the nine eleven buildings. Like I was like, that's a. Con- oh yeah. Look at that controlled demolition. But no, there's a study um, in Chelsea, Massachusetts. The actual rate was probably higher. Because 30, 39 residents have died from the virus. 712 had tested positive as of yeah. Tuesday at a rate about 1,900 cases per 100,000 residents. So, like, they found out that so many of these people had it and never knew it, ever, ever knew it. And, and that's a well, lot of people. And one thing, the most important thing I can say, I know you're not a religious person. I happen to be. But this chip that bill gates is pushing out whatever it whether it's a chip a shot whatever it may be do not take that damn thing i'm warning people now he's only pushing that because his overlords are telling him to he's not a doctor we didn't elect him he's never been to medical school he has no business coming out speaking on anything that any of like that here's here's what i'll say take that shot what i'll say about bill gates is what do you think about because I, I, I'm on the fence about this because years people said, I think Donald Trump said yesterday, he was like, no one ever saw this coming. No one ever knew this could happen. But Bill yeah. G- Bill Gates five years ago, 
um, was warning us about it. He was literally like, hey, listen, pandemic. And, 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 here's, and here's the thing. I didn't think there was anything nefarious about Bill Gates saying that, like a lot of people do. Because this happened in 1918 and a million other times. And the Spanish, in the Spanish flu, this same thing that's happening right now happened. Like in New York right now, they have 3,000 beds, and they're only, they only needed about 800, and the numbers are starting yeah. to go down a little bit. So, so everyone's like, oh, my God, see, it's not as bad as it was, it, it, it was. It's not even as bad as they said it was. They never used all the beds. We thought we wouldn't have enough ventilators. They're sending Massachusetts ventilators now. Now we're getting ventilators. Um, but the caution is they did the same thing with the Spanish flu in 1918. Yeah. Everybody was freaked out about what was going on finally once they once they finally exposed what happened and then everybody wanted to celebrate we're coming back and everything's going to be okay and then it came on two times what it was the first wave so and then and then suddenly people are dying in horrific numbers and things are crazy so just remember like you know that's why people have to stay keep going doing what they're doing now you don't want to take your foot off the pedal if you go to the doctor and they give you an antibiotic you don't take Oh, I feel better. I took five of the pills. They told me to take 30, but I don't feel better. But then the thing inside of you, you, you get sick all over again. It doesn't do the job. It doesn't kill the virus. You get sick again. Um, no, that's right. why you got to take, just because you feel better doesn't mean that the antibiotics killed the bacteria and killed the sickness in you. It didn't. You just feel better from it suppressing it, and now you are you don't take the rest of the medication. Um, so, you know, I, I, I'm walking these lines here, man. Where I get it, you know what I mean? Like, cause I love. There's a part of me that's very concerned. <clears throat> I'm concerned about Bill Gates. I'm concerned about the power, the money, and the personality. But then there's another part of me that I don't want to believe that because I feel like he was just being a good person by trying to tell us, like, guys, I've done all these studies and I've seen what's going on. I know the elite people. I'm worried about a pandemic. Let me do a TED talk on it. I'm really worried about this well, pandemic. Here's what I'm doing to try to get us ready. Because let me just say, if I was rich, right? If I was a yeah. rich person like Bill Gates, me, Joe Cronin, I'm not that smart. This is the stuff I would be doing. I would be using my money to try to help figure out a way to save people from pandemics in the future, from testing stuff. I would be trying to get us to space. Um, and my concern is that people would call me some kind of like globalistic evil emperor, like trying to play God. And it's like, no, I'm not trying to, I actually just want to better us all. Like, I don't, I don't want to do that. I, I'm using my money for a good reason. So I, I'm not, I don't know enough about Bill Gates yet to, to tell you how I feel. There's a part of me that really likes him. But then there's a part of me that's actually scared and thinks, what if this guy's fucking evil? You know, I, I don't know. Well, that's my whole deal. I go by my gut. You know, right. what does your gut tell you, good or bad? I get no good vibes off of that, dude. And now, I could be totally wrong. He could have, like you said, nothing but the best of intentions. But he's before all this shit happened, he's coming out with this Event 201 stuff where they war games all this out him and his wife own all this stuff and they make all these things and he's out pumping this out into the world right so it's like I, you're saying it's like dick cheney in 9 11 yeah. we we bomb our own buildings the next thing you know yeah. dick cheney exactly. i think he has too much like he has okay he has too much of a vested interest both financially and mm -hmm. personally in this and just turn on a TV, turn on any social media. This dude is doing interviews anywhere, anybody that will talk to him. That's a good point. It, he is out there putting it out in the world. It reminds me of a couple sci-fi movies from back in the day where there was a mad scientist who at, the, at first you thought the guy was a good guy. He was studying yeah. stuff. And what happened was he came to the point where he couldn't study on people. So he purposely injected the viruses into people so they were forced to ask for his help. Um, so that is not that and that has been done in medicine for years going back. So if you guys go back, doc, you know, I'm not talking about Dr. Kevorkian either or people like that, but th it has been for millions of years where oh, they don't believe this can happen. I'll show them it can happen. Just like a hacker would hack the government. And you'd say, "Why would the guy hack the government? Because the guy's so brilliant and smart. He's gone crazy." And he said, "Listen, you could be hacked if we don't do this and that. And the government blows them off. And then he says, all right, motherfuckers, I'm going to hack you now. And then I'm going to make you pay me to, to unlock the shit. 
Like it's been done for years, How, decades. How uh, the government has been using Hollywood to pump out movies, sci-fi, fiction. It's not real, and then a form of it happens sometime after, sometimes shorter, longer. It doesn't have. It doesn't matter. But in the how many times has Hollywood made movies about something in a real life situation happened just shortly, just like that? Would you agree though? And let me ask all the, uh, let me ask the Republicans listening, especially the conservatives. Um, mm-hmm. I have stated that I am an independent. I am, yeah. op- I am open. I'm not a left wing or right wing feel. I, I'm more in the middle. Let me ask the people that are more conservative. Because a lot of times the people on the left are always calling for people not to be as rich as they are. Um, but a lot of times the people on the right will say, well, that infringes on freedoms. You should be free to do whatever you do. If you become rich, you worked hard. However, I would argue now that a lot of the left-wing people are very upset with Trump being the president because they feel Trump has biases and money to be made by making decisions that affect the country that could affect his friends' businesses and his businesses. Well, if you are a left-wing person and you're upset about that, then shouldn't you also be upset at Bill Gates, who is a billzillionaire? And every single thing that he creates or does, or that could happen to the earth, he could manipulate for money or control because he is so rich that he is able to do that. So why are the left wing not attacking Bill Gates the same way they would attack Trump? Because Bill Gates can have an even greater influence on me and you's lives because this man controls so much money, power, and influence in the world. He can almost, he could literally create the devastation so that he could make the cure. So shouldn't the left-wing people be upset at Bill Gates the same way they're upset at President Trump? And shouldn't the right-wing people be as upset at people like Trump as they are at Bill Gates? How come the, how come the right-wing people are only upset at Bill Gates for this power and money, but not the people on the right? And how come the left-wing people aren't upset at Bill Gates when he controls even more power potentially than Trump. I will say this much for Trump. Initially, when when the 2016 election started, I was a Ted Cruz guy because he was the closest to me. Now, I would classify myself as a conservative independent. I do not believe in a party. I believe this two-party system has got us to where it is now. And... So Ted Cruz for me was as close as possible. I didn't like any of them, to be honest. But (laughs) then Trump got into the race. I heard what he said. I liked it. I liked his ferocity. He was, you know, we're going to blah, 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 lock him up, do this, whatever. It was hilarious. Like, I mean, that's that's why people wonder. Yeah, uh... yeah, and like, you know, the Trump that ran for president and the Trump that is president is two different people. I mean, they're not even nowhere near the same. I voted. I want the Trump I voted for, and I will vote again for Trump because if anybody votes for Sleepy Joe Biden, you're a fucking moron. <laughs> I'm sorry. What I don't care yeah. if you're a card carrying Democrat, you you'd be crazy to. But I've been upset at Trump because a lot of things his mouth has, is writing checks his ass can't cash. You know how much has he said that he's going to do? He hasn't even talked about, brought up again, or anything else. Draining the swamp? How much of these pedophile-loving politicians on both sides are still up there ruining our lives? You know. Oh, it's a it, it's I, it's this this whole thing has shown what it what it is. It's a mess. Right. Everybody's a mess. I have a problem with big government in general. If you had to classify me with a party, I'd say I'm closer to a libertarian than anything. Yeah. But like I said, I believe in personal freedoms. I believe in, obviously, the goodwill of the people, but I don't need big government telling me what to put in my body, you know. I, what else did you think of? I'm curious about Ted Cruz. I always thought he was a snake oil salesman, but... Uh, oh, I did too, but... Oh, okay. In a... As my old man used to say, if you're voting for politics, you're voting for one asshole or another. There's no... Good people don't want to be president. Look how hard of a fucking job that is. No matter what, you're going to lose. You're going to come out hated, and you're going to come out worse for it. 
look at any president when they go into it, and then when they come out of it, look how much they've aged because of the yeah. bullshit they had to deal with. They look like shit, man. I mean, oh, I mean, yeah. Obama got gray haired the first year. Right. Michelle, her dick grew back. I mean, that was weird. <laughs> no um, shit. So many things. No, man, Texas, I love you, man. I'll let you go. But uh, how, how is your wife? How's she getting better yet, or should they? Yeah, well, she's finally out of bed, and you know the soup and the medicine and everything else has gotten her. You know, man, I'll tell you what, and, that chicken you know. noodle soup shit is for real. Stuff that really no helps. Shit, dude. Yeah, but I'm telling you, man. I don't know what it is. I don't know if like there's something about the hot soup that kills some of the spreading bacteria or something. I don't know, I have man. No it's, idea. But uh, how many? But, yeah, how, she, how long has she been sick with the? And she has COVID, right? No, it, it was tested negative. She did oh, not okay, have. all right. So she just has so a bad we, flu. We looked at it. Basically, the doctor said it was just a bad flu. I mean, they they thought COVID because everything going on, and they had to treat it as if it was COVID because they didn't know. I mean, we, we had no idea. Luckily, we didn't get to the ventilator stage, but, you know, we got out of it. We came out of it better than a lot of people did. You know, that for that we we were lucky, you know what I mean. I can't imagine, man, anybody I can't no no one's gonna vote Biden. Let me explain why no one's gonna vote Biden. Uh Dave Rose, do you think anybody's gonna vote Biden? Dave Rose in the chat. Look at that. He knows I'll he, he knows I'll blow him. Um, I want you to go look at Joe Cronin show's uh poll. Oh let me let me just pull it up for you. Because this is very telling. This is my audience. So we do have to keep that in mind. This is my audience, so it's maybe it's a little skewed somehow, whatever the case is. But I showed this the other day, and um, this is crazy. Take a look at these numbers. Who are you voting for? Who are you voting for, JCS Army? 907 of you voted on my Joe Cronin Show channel. 907. That's a pretty good sample size of votes here. 15% of you said Biden. 7% of you said you would write in a name. 39% of you said Trump, and 39% of you said not voting. So basically, about 40 6% won't matter. So 46% of 907. So half of you won't matter at all. And we'll be left with 15% voting for Biden and 39% voting for Trump. The last time I did a poll when Trump was running for president against Hillary, we asked everybody how they felt. Trump won that poll as well. In similar fashion, actually, it was closer. I think if I remember right, it was it was closer than 15 to 39. It was, you know, which is um, more than half uh, for sure. But no, it was it was something like it would have been um, like 20 to 35 or 34. It would have been 20 to 34 or something like that. But this is an even greater number. So there's some insight um, to the election stuff, I guess. You know, I, whatever that means. There you go. Um, I think that's interested, um, interesting to know those numbers. So half the people are not going to vote and would write in. And at least about 40% of you, 40% of you are going to vote for Trump. And 15% are would vote for Biden. So it's a, it's a really different, it's quite a mix. It's quite a mix, man. Interesting. Interesting numbers. Um, anyway, I've been ranting and hanging on here. It's about time for Raw, so I'm going to get rolling over to that in a minute. Um, take some calls uh, before we go. Also wanted to say thanks to everybody who signed up on Patreon. A lot of patron signups. Going to have some stuff going on over there. Anybody who wants to message me um, individually, feel free to hit me up. I, I was busy all day today loading the Home Depot stuff and getting all the tiles in here and fixing stuff. And now I've still got to figure out the leak. And then I've got the guy doing the heater tomorrow. It's weird. Uh, 470, hello. 
Hello, Joe. How you doing today? I am doing all right, man. I'm drinking apple juice. No, you drinking apple juice? I'm drinking alcohol. Oh, man, I, I'm, like, still... I, you know what? They say you get creative, like, when you smoke weed and apple... And when you have, uh, you know, uh, edibles and stuff like that. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I've I, I've smoked weed before and felt creative. I've felt very, like, whatever. But normally, it just kind of makes me tired. My reflexes go down. I can't play video games. So, like, I literally just sit on a couch and veg out. Like, I can't play video games. I don't know how people do it. So, but I, I'm feeling the creativity today. Like, the day after. Yesterday, I felt like I was a sack of shit. And now I feel like I'm... Yeah, I understand that. Isn't that weird? Yeah, I, I've, act, I've actually stopped smoking weed because ever since the damn coronavirus started, every time I smoke the damn fucking reefer, damn devil lettuce, I fucking get a fucking anxiety attack just thinking about the Rona. Yes, that's what I'm like. So, it, it, it whatever I feel like, it, anticip- it in, intensifies it. So... If I'm feeling nervous or worried, yeah, the paranoia is out of control. Plus the smoke and your lungs, you know, you want to kind of keep your lungs clear and healthy if you can right now. That's why I recommend edibles instead, um, you know, because that may help. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. Don't know shit. Could have no effect. I, I don't know. Yeah, who knows what anybody even knows today. But, yeah, goddamn, fuck the goddamn devil's lettuce. Like I said, man, that shit got me so fucking paranoid. Ever since this fucking ever since the coronavirus started, every time I smoke, that's all I fucking think about, and that shit gives me the worst anxiety attack ever. I'm like, fuck that shit. I'm gonna yeah. drink myself. The, I'm drink some alcohol. Plus, that shit killed the coronavirus when I drink it. Uh, yeah. I mean, it may help. I mean, there are some. There's a little bit of something to the fact that you can have something in your throat, and uh, you know the. Alcohol may wash it down a little bit, may kill some stuff, uh, but really it's got to be over seventy percent or something. It's not, but um, but yeah, it, it some alcohol can help you, you know, a little bit. You don't want a lot though. You drink too much alcohol, you get that liver shit and kidney stuff, and then you that could hurt you when if you do get sick as well. I, I'd recommend everybody take if you're not getting sun every day, make sure you're taking vitamin D, vitamin C, take all the vitamins, and uh, drink a shitload of water. And uh, that will help you if you if and when if you ever do get sick, it'll be very interesting. I'm voting Jesus Christ, says Scott. Smoke weed every day. I know it's your job, Joe, but watching Raw without crowds just ain't worth it. Yeah, well, it's bad. I mean, listen, I have 600 to 900 people watching every Monday instead of not even. I've last last Monday we had 700 people watching my show. Normally there'd be 1,300. You know, what I mean, there's it's just it's dead right now. Wrestling is sort of dead. There's nothing we can do about it. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here, guys. I'm going to get ready for Raw. i got to clean up some stuff and all this other bullshit. I also played Diablo 2 today for a little while. I got all throwbacky on that, man. Um, but uh, anyway, I certainly don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just spitting out a bunch of shit. And, um, yeah, but for the person that said um, that I'm downplaying it and that Trump is downplaying it, um, I don't know, man. It doesn't seem like anybody's downplaying it right now at all. And I, 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 I was buying stuff in January. I was tweeting you in January warning you about it. And chances are you probably said I was crazy because so many people made fun of me in January. So I have never downplayed this whatsoever. I have upplayed it. If you follow my Twitter, go back and look at my tweets. And, and um, you know who downplayed it is uh, that Nancy Pelosi bimbo. Anyway, I'm out of here. Thanks for listening. I had fun. And thanks to everybody who donated earlier, too, man. That helped out, obviously. Uh, I've got episodes of Monetize This post shows that are going to be going up this week. Never heard before, after, what happened after we went off the air. There's a lot of craziness. I want to thank Tony Diesel for making up for the 30 patrons that were lost last uh, month, obviously due to the corona stuff. Tony Diesel has gone diesel on Patreon to the tune of 200. Holy shit, Tony Diesel. Thank you, Tony Diesel. You'll get all the bonus coverage and all the other stuff on uh, patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Trailbound, thank you. He's back on Patreon. William Ritchie, uh, Shane Dickey. God, I love saying that name. Uh, Jamie Purcell, Broken Lion, went up to the $50 VIP fucking producer 
big time ball sucker category. Uh, Jason and Duty Brown, thank you. And Russ a lot. We're going to be releasing all the $25 producer credits this week. Again, thank you. See you tonight for the Raw Review and probably more likely some video games. Tonight, hit me up at uh, Corrupted Pod on Twitter or Joe Cronin Show at Yahoo.com. And maybe tomorrow, uh, maybe not tomorrow, uh, but maybe Wednesday, Arknolia, we can get our thing done. Because tomorrow I can't do it because the guy's going to be in the basement working on the heater and I'm freaked out. But do not believe what anybody says. Believe what you say. Don't believe Joe Cronin. Don't believe anybody. Follow the facts. Follow the trail. Use your mind. Expand your mind. Free thinkers are dangerous. And don't listen to one person. And don't just believe what one person says. Especially especially me. Don't believe what I'm saying. Look into stuff for yourself. Stay safe, and I'll see you tonight.